Yes. Um, yeah, first, thank you very much for the lecture. I enjoyed it. And I've got a question about your last argument. Um, can you tell us how you personally experience God, just that we can get an idea of which sort of experience you are talking about? Well, I wouldn't want to make my experience normative for anyone else, because when you talk to people who have a relationship with God, you'll find that it, it is as different as there are different people. Now, I'm, I'm happy to share my experience, but I wouldn't want anyone to take it as normative, that it has to be your experience. But in, in my life, I wasn't raised in a Christian home or even a church-going family, uh, though it was a good, loving family. But when I became a teenager, I began to ask these deep questions about the meaning of life and the purpose of my existence. And in the search for answers, I began to attend a church in our local community. The only problem was that instead of answers to my questions, all I found was a sort of social country club where the dues were a dollar a week in the offering plate. And the other high school students who pretended to be such good Christians on Sunday lived for their real God the rest of the week which was popularity. And this really bothered me because I thought, here I feel so spiritually empty inside, and yet externally, at least, I'm leading a better life than they are, and they claim to be Christians. And I thought, they're all a bunch of hypocrites. They must be just as empty as I am, but they're putting up this false front, pretending to be something they're not. And so I began to be, be very bitter and angry toward people in the institutional church because of their phoniness and hypocrisy. And soon this attitude began to spread toward other people. Everybody, I would look at them and I think, is that really the genuine person I'm seeing? They're all fakes. They're all phonies. Everybody's holding up a plastic mask to the world, pretending to be somebody they're not. And the real person is cowering down inside, afraid to come out and be real. And so I began to hate other people and, and say, I want nothing to do with them. They're all phonies and hypocrites. And I, I threw myself into my studies. And I said, I don't need other people. I don't want them. Uh, and and I, I, I thought I, I would distance myself from them. And I was on my way, frankly, toward becoming a very alienated young man. And yet, in moments of honesty and introspection, when I looked into my own heart, I sensed that deep down inside, I really did want to love and to be loved by others. And that I really did need other people after all. And I realized in that moment that I was just as much a phony as they were. Because here I was pretending to all this bravado of not needing other people when deep down inside I knew I really did. And so that anger turned in on myself for my own hypocrisy and my phoniness. And I don't know if you understand what this is like, but this kind of inner anger just eats away at your insides day after day after day, making every day miserable, another day to get through. And I remember I walked into my high school German class one day, and I sat down behind a girl who's one of these types that is always so happy, it just makes you sick. <laughs> and I tapped her on the shoulder, and she turned around and I said to her, Sandy, what are you always so happy about anyway? And she said, well, Bill, it's because I'm saved. And I said, you're what? And she said, I know Jesus Christ is my personal Savior. And I said, well, I go to church. And she said, that's not enough, Bill. You've got to have him really living in your heart. And I said, well, what would he want to do a thing like that for? And she said, because he loves you, Bill. And that just hit me like a ton of bricks. Here I was so filled with anger and hate inside. And she said, there was someone who loved me, really loved me. And who was it but the God of the universe? And that thought just staggered me to think that the God of the universe could love me. Bill Craig, that worm down there on that speck of dust called planet Earth, I just couldn't take it in. Well, that lit a, a fire in me. I went home that night, and I found a New Testament, and I began to read it for the first time. And as I did, I was absolutely captivated by the person of Jesus of Nazareth. There was a ring of truth about this man's teachings that was undeniable. 
And there was an authenticity about his life that wasn't characteristic of these people who claimed to be his followers in this church I was going to. And I knew then I couldn't throw the baby out with the bathwater. And as I read the New Testament, I, I began to understand what my problem was. According to the, to the New Testament, I was spiritually separated from God because of my sin, the things that I had done and said and thought that were wrong, and that therefore I was guilty before God and, and alienated from God. So it was no wonder God seemed so unreal to me and why life seemed so pointless. I was not in relationship with God, not in the relationship I was created to have. I was alienated from God spiritually and needed to be forgiven and cleansed. And I, I learned that God had sent his son, Christ, into the world to die for me, to pay the penalty of sin that I deserved, thereby freeing up God's love and forgiveness so that I might be restored to the relationship that I was created to have. Sandy introduced me to other Christians in the high school. I had never met people like this. Uh, no matter what they said about Jesus, what was undeniable was that they seemed to be living life on a different plane of reality than I was. There, and and it, it imparted a deep peace and meaning and joy to their lives that was notably absent in mine. Well, uh, to make a long story short, I went through about six months of the most intense soul searching that I've ever been through. And at the end of those six months, I just came to the end of my rope and cried out to God one night. And as I cried out all the anger and the bitterness that was in me, I felt this tremendous infusion of joy, like a balloon being blown up and blown up until it was ready to burst. And I remember I rushed outside. It was a warm September Midwestern uh, evening. And as I looked up at the sky, I could see the Milky Way from horizon to horizon. And I looked up at the stars and I thought, God, I've come to know God. And that moment just changed my whole life. Because you see, I had thought enough about this during those six months to realize that if this were really the truth, that I could do nothing less than give my entire life to sharing this message with mankind. Because this is the greatest news ever announced. And so that's basically why I'm here tonight, is because I love to share the truth of this message with students who are around the same age that I was when my life was turned upside down through an encounter with Jesus Christ. And at that moment, he became, God became a living reality in my life uh, that he hadn't been before. It was as though the light came on, the vacuum was filled. And it's a reality that I've walked with now for over 40 years, day by day, a reality that I believe anyone here tonight can find if you'll just seek him with an open mind and an open heart. So that's something of my personal uh, testimony and experience of God.